morning guys now I'm not like fully awake <clears throat> but <laughs> I am in a great mood today why you may ask so today's video is sponsored by Neutrogena so shout out to them because this is a dream come true I've been using Neutrogena products since I was like a teen. I've also had the pleasure of trying some products that I've never tried before and have fallen in love with, which you guys will see in a second. And I have a super special guest joining us today. I cannot wait. So today is about saving money. Today's video is basically an at-home, affordable, glow-up, spa day, pampering situation. So first things first of today's at-home glow-up, we're gonna wash our face. This is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost with Hyaluronic Acid. You guys know I love my Hyaluronic Acid. This is the Hydrating Gel Cleanser Fragrance Free, which is really important for me because I have sensitive skin. If you hate the feeling of when a cleanser like makes your skin super tight and you're just like, and you make that face, you're like, my skin is so soft after cleansing like that does not happen you know what i mean like my skin is baby soft this next step is to wake me up but also instead of going and paying all this money for like a cryotherapy facial right we're just gonna do it here at home with a bowl of water and some ice this is Neza's at home affordable cryotherapy facial it'll wake you up it also helps tighten your pores and all you need is some some clean old water and ice so I don't know what happened with my ice machine but my ice is very weirdly shaped so please don't judge my eyes I also lost my headband and I don't want to get like my hair soaking wet so we're just gonna do that okay, <laughs> okay. <Ew. laughs> Okay. Alright. Uh, always use clean towels. Yeah. Uh, uh. Sorry, I don't know. So I'm applying my serum. This is a Neutrogena Hydro Boost Niacinamide Serum Fragrance Free. So nice. And then I have the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gel Cream Fragrance Free as well. Also has hyaluronic acid. So we're just gonna. So yeah, that is my skincare routine for the morning. I'm gonna go downstairs and get ready for our special guest, and I'll see you guys in a second. Hello! Hello! Guys, this is Dr. Scott. Hi, She's hi. my special guest today. Yay. We're gonna have a sit down. I get to pick her brain about skincare, and so let's get it. Yay! All right, what's up, you guys? So I have Dr. Laura Scott here with me today. Super excited to have this little <laughs> Kiki. She's also Afro-Latina, like yes. myself, so that's really <laughs> cool. But I'm gonna let her introduce herself. Sure. Well, I'm Dr. Laura. Thanks so much for having of course. me. So thanks for being um, here. Gosh, what can I say about myself? I did my medical school at Harvard. I did my dermatology training at the University of Miami, and I just recently left there. So I was previously working as the associate director of their skin of color division, which is really important really to great. me because our skin is unique yeah. and there are certain things that, you know, patients want to know that they're going to somebody who knows how to take care of their skin. So that's why we created that clinic, worked there for the last three years and just recently moved to the West Coast. So now Whoa! I am a Kelly girl. She's a Kelly girl. She's in San Diego. I love it. So I do have sensitive skin. Um, I actually didn't know what type of skin I had for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And then when I found out and started using like the proper products, I was like, okay. Yeah. Now it's working. I get it now. <laughs> yeah, I get it. But for me, what sort of exfoliant do you recommend for someone with sensitive skin that I'm not trying to do anything too harsh? Yeah, to skin? and I think one important question that I always like to ask people is, do you need an exfoliant because you feel like your skin is looking a little bit more dull and otherwise you have sort of normal sensitive skin? Or do you want an exfoliant because you feel like you're still struggling with occasional breakouts and things like that or mild texture, right? Yeah. And I think that you fall into the second group where it's like occasional breakouts or maybe some yes. mild texture. And in that case, for sensitive skin, I actually really like for people to use an exfoliant in their cleanser. 
Interesting. Which is something that I don't always recommend, right? And that's why it's important to ask questions. But for people who sort of have quote unquote normal skin, oftentimes one of the best places to use an exfoliant is in some type of leave-on product. Yeah. But for those of us with sensitive skin, I have it too, the leave-ons can actually be too irritating. And so I prefer a form of therapy that's called short contact therapy, meaning you keep it on just for a little bit and then you rinse Remove it off. It. And so for sensitive skin, that's a great way to introduce your exfoliant. Neutrogena has one called their Stubborn Texture Daily Cleanser. I also I have love it. this. You have this one? <laughs> this Stubborn Texture one is such a great affordable option that you could literally just pick up in the drugstore. All the theme of this video. Yeah, that has an AHA and DHA, which, you know, what are the difference? One is an exfoliant that sort of unsticks the glue okay. between your normal skin cells, and one is one that goes deep into pores and sort of clears those out. So it's great for people who are struggling with occasional breakouts and then just that dull skin or that textured appearance on skin, and then you can rinse it off so I usually have people just massage it in for a minute and then rinse off and then you can pair with something like a niacinamide serum which I don't know if you have this one I used it this you morning did. oh Maybe my gosh like I'm so proud yes. what do you need me for? <laughs> Niacinamide is anti-inflammatory, but it also helps to improve texture and to start to even out dark marks, but in a much more gentle way. Yeah. So again, whereas somebody else might be able to use a leave-on glycolic acid or something like that, for sensitive skin, it's nice to use the rinse-off acid product to get your exfoliation and then a niacinamide serum as your leave-on. In general, how often should someone exfoliate where they're not doing too much to their skin? So that's a good question. And I think, you know, for your average person, if you're using that type of leave-on product, whether it's a toner or a solution or a type of serum, I usually tell people really one to two times a week is a great place to start. And some people can go up a little bit, especially if they are really struggling with acne or something like that. Um, but somebody like yourself, if we're using the cleanser as your yeah. exfoliant, you can use that daily. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but again, don't don't misinterpret that get, as like <laughs> pour in the solution yeah. in your leave-on serum exfoliant daily yeah. because that would be too much. Yeah. So it's really about knowing which type of product you're using and then you know using yeah. the frequency. At what point in the skincare routine do you apply a face mask? So that's a great question. And I think one, I'll say a skin mask, you know, this face mask is sort of a nice luxury to have. So I don't want you to think that you need to use a face mask, but it's really nice to use at nighttime um, and to use it sort of as the last step in your routine. So you've already sort of applied everything and then you're gonna go ahead and apply your face mask. But when we're talking about those kind of masks, really the point is that it's going to help all of your products absorb a little bit more and it's gonna lock in that moisture and really just keep it there on your face for a while and so, so it's nice I've, to just use all your stuff beforehand. So I can put on my moisturizer and then apply like the hydrogel mask after? I sure never can and then when you take it off you don't have to rinse or anything, right? And I think that's why it's helpful to know, you know, what kind of mask are we talking about? Yeah. And that's one of the confusing things in skincare is that yeah. people use the same word for a lot of different products, right? Yeah. People use charcoal masks. Yeah. People use, you know, other types of rinse off masks. Yeah. And then you have ones like the actual sheet mask. And this one is just nice because it really is just adding in an extra punch of moisture. Yeah. I tend to have the occasional breakout, especially hormonal ones. Mm -hmm. um, are there any foods that we should avoid? That's such a good question. Okay. I, I really, you know, my acne appointments are my longest appointments, my first ones, because I really go in, there's so many things that contribute to acne. And you mentioned hormonal, you know, I'm asking people, what are you, are you on any type of birth control? Are you using this, are you using that? And when it comes to diet, it is important to get a good feel of what they're using. You mentioned working out, right? Mm -hmm. So I always ask, are you on any type of protein supplement? Because whey protein is one of the top triggers for acne. For acne? Mm-hmm. <sighs> And so for people who mention, they're like, oh, I have a good diet, I go to the gym, and I always, you know, for me, that's always a little, not a red flag, but it's a reminder to ask about whey protein or any type of supplements. Good to know. Because people are usually taking protein shakes or little protein bars, whatever yeah. it may be. Whey protein is probably my top thing that I'm making sure patients are not okay. using if they're struggling with acne. Doesn't mean it's bad for everybody. There's plenty of people well, who sure. can use it, and they're fine. So good, keep using it. <laughs> but if you are noticing breakouts and you're somebody who uses it, that would be the first thing I to take, take out, out. Okay. Mm -hmm. and then you know mentioning that spike of insulin other foods that cause it to spike are things like you know milk especially skim milk actually skim milk yeah skim milk is, is is causes a bigger spike than you know whole milk for example and then ice cream and sort of like the, our, our high sweet foods oh. basically that turn on our insulin are the ones that are yeah. most associated should we be applying vitamin C in the a.m. or the p.m. or both 
Yeah, that's a great question. So I would definitely pick one or the other. Okay. For the majority of people, um, vitamin C works a little bit better in the morning, and that's because it also works as an antioxidant. So I always say there's there's no hard rules, and if you're somebody who's not using a retinol at night, then I would say it's okay to use your vitamin C in the nighttime instead. Yeah. A lot of people are already using a retinol though, and it's not really great to combine to both? those two. Okay. So, yeah, it can be a okay. lot. It can be irritating to okay. combine those two. So for most people, if you're using a retinol at night, then your vitamin C should it's go in the morning. morning. Mm -hmm. So having sensitive skin, retinol has always been kind of a scary topic for me yeah, I don't yeah. know how invasive it's gonna be on mm -hmm. my skin so how would you recommend me kind of introducing it into my skincare yeah so that's a great question one that comes up all the time because retinol can get a bad rap because yeah. it, it is powerful it's yeah. something that works well and if you start it too quickly it can lead to redness irritation peeling and flaking all those things that can be normal but it's nice to avoid them yeah. with normal skin Every other night is okay. how you should be starting. And if you're on the sensitive end or if you have rosacea, something like that, then really just starting two nights a week. So say right. Monday and Thursday and keep going that way for a week or two, maybe it's a month or two, right? right. Everybody's skin is a little bit different. And then you can slowly work up to a higher frequency, you know, using it more often yeah. during the week. The other trick that I oftentimes like to do it's just switch up the layer a tiny bit. So retinol, you know, in, in the nighttime, after you've removed your makeup, you cleanse your skin, yeah. usually you're gonna then apply your retinol and then you would put your moisturizer on top to sort of seal everything in. If you're somebody with really, really sensitive skin, it's actually nice to put your moisturizer on first okay and then your retinol on top interesting so then you have just this little barrier between your skin and the retinol so that it absorbs even more slowly all right you guys so to wrap this up obviously i have a lot of young viewers who are just getting into the skincare game what is you know tips or maybe just a piece of advice for someone who's just getting into that that journey that's yeah journey. well one i love it i love to see people you know especially younger people interested in taking care of their skin and not just talking about makeup and all that which is yeah. fun but it's it's really nice to see and refreshing and i would say quite honestly the most important thing that you could start when you're young is sunscreen and i know it's not the most glamorous thing but yeah. there are just like i said so many options nowadays and those of you who have you know the luxury of you <laughs> you can just be preserving what you have at that right. point as opposed to trying to undo damage right that some of us you know older folks we're trying to undo things um not trying to undo the aging because aging yeah. is such a privilege yeah we're trying to undo the damage that we've done before we knew better so y'all know better now sunscreen and sunscreen is probably the best gift that you can give yourself if you're interested in skincare right now yeah. well thank you for being here well, of course thanks Yay. for having me all right, you guys, see you in a sec. We're gonna continue on with this at-home glow up. I have had this blowout for too long, so I'm gonna wash my hair. We're gonna do an at-home deep conditioning because I don't feel like paying for a deep conditioning at the salon. So I'm gonna put a hair mask in, sit in the bath, exfoliate my body. So yeah, let's get it. All right, you guys, welcome to this shower voiceover. Step one, wet your hair. I'm going in with the Neutrogena Healthy Scalp Hydro Boost Shampoo with Hyaluronic Acid. Now, Dr. Scott, before she left, told me, remember, shampoo is meant for the scalp, especially for my curly girls, so that's why I am only applying it to my scalp, really getting in there, making sure I'm getting it all clean, not on my ends. And this is a Neutrogena Healthy Scalp Hydro Boost Conditioner with Hyaluronic Acid. I loved this. It made my hair so soft and helped with the detangling process because as you guys know, especially my curly girls, sometimes conditioners just make it worse and you want a conditioner that gives you that slip. I detangle my hair with this little wet brush. I don't remember when I started doing this, but ever since I started doing this, I don't lose like almost any hair, like at all. And I just grip my hair into a ponytail and just kind of go and do my ends and then I go around and do the rest of my head. But ever since I started doing this, I don't lose like any hair in the shower. So highly recommend. And then after I've gone through the whole thing with my little wet brush, I use this other just like regular wet brush detangling comb just to make sure I really got the knots out. This deep conditioner, I have been using it for years. The Shea Moisture Manuka Honey. It is amazing. And then I just put a shower cap on, leave it on for like 30 minutes and we are good to go. All right, welcome to my bath. Welcome to bath time with Neza. I have some bubble bath. This smells like lavender. 
Smells so good, just to, you know, set the mood. I have my hair mask on. I'm gonna leave it on for like 30 minutes. So I'm just gonna kind of float in my tub. I'm gonna put on a face mask. This is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Hydro Gel Mask. I love Hydro Gel Masks. I haven't been able to find one in a while, but I feel like these just stick to your skin so these stick to your skin so much easier than like a sheet mask and I love these. It comes in two parts. So, oh, it feels so nice, so cold. Face mask is applied. I am in full relax mode right now. I feel like all my bubbles died. Now it's time to shave my legs because it's been a while. I mean, I really had no real reason if anyone has any like favorite shaving creams that they like love let me know because I always just pick whatever catches my eye now I will say I have never cut myself shaving um, like ever the only time I've ever cut myself with the razor was it like fell from somewhere and then like nicked my leg on the way down also this is probably like the most raw thing I've ever done on camera ever just like shaving my legs but you know what it's fine it's normal hope it inspires you guys to shave your legs not that you need to because clearly i don't literally all my bubbles are gone this is all that's left and now we're gonna do a gentle exfoliation now i ran out of my scrub that I usually use, but these are also good on their own and I don't want to do too much. I know we talked about exfoliating, obviously like our face, like for skincare, but if y'all are not exfoliating your body, I highly recommend. So I think these gloves were like eight bucks or like nine bucks. I got them at Target, I think, but they make me baby soft. Now I already have kind of super soft skin because my mom at a really young age like engraved in my brain to always lotion right after the shower so i still do that to this day so i have pretty soft skin i'm pretty proud of it i'm not gonna lie obviously this is so much cheaper than going to the spa and getting like a body scrub you know which i have done and they are really nice but they're really expensive make sure you squeeze all the water out of these and like hang them to dry also, you should be throwing these away like after 30 days and like buying a new pair. Okay, to kill some time, I'm just gonna sit here and read. Um, but I will see you guys when I take this out. So, now to lotion my body. I, this is just a Nivea um, lotion. I'm almost done with this one. This is maybe like my number one tip, especially for like my younger viewers. If you're not already doing this, you'll thank me when you're older. Anytime that you're fresh out of the shower, fresh out of the bath, make sure you lotion up. Make sure it's a good lotion, like really hydrating. Like stay away from like, you know, all those like fragrancy lotions. I can't tell you how much I am complimented about my skin of how soft it is, even by like strangers. I'm not kidding. I have had strangers like I shake their hand or like they literally brush up against my arm or something and they're like what do you do how are you and i'm like what like i don't even i don't think i realize how soft i am until i obviously compare to others but it is all thanks to my mama because she literally would make me do this every time i got out of the shower she's like did you put lotion did you put lotion i'm gonna clean up my eyebrows i do somewhat trim my eyebrows by myself at home when i don't have time to go get them done or something so i'm just gonna like clean them up and kind of trim a little because they've grown a little long on some parts fun fact my parents did not let me touch my eyebrows like ever as a kid middle school high school i had thick eyebrows in high school they would not let me touch them comment down below if anyone else's parents were the same way because i feel like everyone was staring at my eyebrows in high school like wanting to pluck them also use these fun little things that are like super cheap but be careful because I have cut myself. Use this to kind of get, you know, the little ones that are here in the middle. And I'll also use it to like clean up some stuff, but love these things. Yeah, so I did a super lazy braid, but 
it works. I also dried it a little bit with the blow dryer to help it dry. Hi, Bobby, do you want to come say hi? Oh, good boy. He just always wants to be on camera, huh? You just always want to be on the camera. <laughs> but you guys, that was my affordable at home glow up. My skin, I wish you guys could see. It's literally glowing. There's like a sheen, but I am baby soft. My hair is soft. My skin is glowing. I will leave all the products I used down below. Why do you look like that? Hey guys, that is the end of this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, comment down below any other videos you guys want for the month. Another huge thank you to Neutrogena for sponsoring this video and to Dr. Scott for stopping by and chatting with me. But yeah, hit that subscribe button, join the family, and we love ya. We're doing great. And I'll see you guys next time. Okay, bye.